Hello player, welcome to Dublin Tabletons. I'm your coach Eddie Zayla and today we're going to learn something very popular, very common in the game and that is the pendulum serve. Now the pendulum serve is very good and very popular because it allows you to disguise the spin that you want to use to spin side spin and back spin as well as to be flexible on your placement ball on the opponent's side between short, long and medium. So because of those reasons, I'm gonna focus on purely on the side spin aspect of the serve. So for the side spin pendulum serve, I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you in-depth looks on why and where to put the ball in the connectivity with the rubber. But most importantly, I'm gonna show you how to hold the racket and how to come back into shake hand grip to continue with the rally in the match. Now, real quick, I do have a very in-depth video on how to hold the grip for this pendulum and reverse pendulum serve. The video is linked in the description, but I'm going to run through real quick anyway, a, a quick little summary of it. So what you do is, you take your playing hand, I'm right handed, so this is my playing hand, you make a water gun, okay, you take out a trigger, so that's the trigger, then you put the racket on top of those two fingers inside of your body, right? Just, just hold them like that, you're not doing anything else. These, the bottom two fingers, and do nothing, so you just tuck them in, okay? They're not the key to the key aspect of this. What you do then after that for the trigger is you put the finger right here on the wing of the blade and the rubber, right there. That's gonna be the balance and why your racket is not gonna slip out when you do the serve. After that, you put your index finger kind of straight or bent, whatever you want, middle side. I'm gonna go just in the middle for its, for its easiest aspect and the thumb goes on the logo of the rubber, and that's it. So when you use your wrist, see, your wrist is not obstructed by your forearm, and you can freely use your wrist. And because you hold the trigger finger on the, on the wing of the blade, it does not fall out when you do it. Now you'll get better, you don't have to do that, but this is the beginner stage on how to do the serve. So now we know how to hold our racket, okay? So we hold it. So I'm going to go to, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to go to my right-hand corner, okay? So this is where you usually stand, right? So to do the serve, I, this is my trick. I like to put my foot, my leg, sort of halfway of the table, okay? I don't like to be all the way over the white line. I like to be over here, sometimes even over here if I do a reverse pendulum. But the reason I like to do that is, you know, when I do my serve and get into my position, I feel like I'm much more much more flexible and available for all the positions. You don't have to come in short. I can reach it very nicely. I'm still in the perfect distance to be long or short yet. The only issue is maybe that when the ball comes in your backhand, you have to come back a little bit. But it's a small sacrifice rather than coming in behind the thing, doing your serve, and then you just feel like you'll have to you'll try harder to get into that perfect position. So I would like to start from, from right here with my service and have my arm and ev everything of the contact behind the white line to make it legal. Now that you're in your perfect position, let's talk about the three steps, three stages to complete the serve fully. Stage number one is we have to put our elbow and our racket in the correct position and, and both of each other connect with each other. What I mean by that is if you put your racket sideways, your arm goes up with your elbow. If you want to put your elbow up, your racket comes down sideways. And that is the first step of your service, that your elbow has to be in this weird little chicken arm thing with a little triangle in between, and that means your racket will go sideways. Now, there is a whole explanation why we call it a pendulum, because it's a whole ground for the clock, you know, the way the arm moves. And what, what I mean by that is that your second step is your swing. Your swing looks something like this. It can look like a robot dance, or it can be like a ground for the clock. Tick, tuck, tick, tuck and that is your swing. Make sure, the easiest way to know how much you want to swing is just try and put your elbow wherever it's at and leave it as that and use your arm to swing. So you're still a little bent and that way when you come back into position, you haven't overdone it and you don't have to like compensate with any other spin or speed. So wherever the elbow was, just, just do that. If you overdo it straight away, again, it has its benefits, but it's just harder to maintain its possible chance to land on the opponent's side with the speed because you overdo it either coming from the back or up or whatever. So the easiest way to master it quickly is to just whatever your elbow is and follow through with that. And that is your stage number one and two. One and two. Now for step number three, I'm going to be close to the cam uh, camera because I want to show you the placement of the, of the ball and the, and the racket together 
And, and this is where it comes with its effect of saying that, oh, it's, you know, you can disguise it, you can put as, many, as, as different spins and speeds as you want with the same swing. And this is why. Now, the idea of the, the general serve is that you make contact with the rubber that comes in the closest with the ball, meaning when it swings out and swings back into it, this is the first side. You roll the ball, comes out as you follow through, and then you brush it off to create the spin speed and everything to drive over the ball over the net. Now, every part of this rubber has its benefits, and now and then it changes its quality and its idea of the serve. If you go more in the middle, that creates control, okay? If you go more sideways, that creates more spin than speed. And again, this is very good, and I would use this more often than not, because if a person's used to your serving, and especially if they you know, have the courage in the world to attack you, you give this placement for the racket with the same length, different serve straight away. They, I promise you, eight, seven out of 10 times, they will miss the ball. And not even miss, sorry, miss the ball, but they will mess up the shot and you will get the point because the spin comes off more and that creates a different world troubles for your opponent. If you want fast and spinny, you go down the racket right here. And this is especially kind of sharp, quick, low over the net and very deep in the corners, you go more right here. If you want to, again, that perfect balance between a little side spin, a little back spin motion of the ball being a little slower, still good speed, but a little slower and lower over the net, you make it right here in that sweet spot. A few videos, almost a year ago, I spoke about right here. So again, a lot of different variations, a lot of different benefits of all, but the idea, the general idea is that you make the contact closer to the net, roll the ball and clip it with the edge. But don't be shy to start practicing in the middle just for control, especially if you're like 9-9, you want the ball to be on the table, do it over here. Or if you want to be a little tactical about it, put it over here and cause some trouble for your, for your opponent. For complete variation, go down for complete success, nine or 10 times, you put it right here in the sweet spot. Now the full stage of stage three looks something like this. In your position, you take a ball in your in your hand, you put your tip of your racket next to the ball, doubling your third row. It's a lot easier to make contact with it, okay? And when you pull, when you go up and make contact with it, make sure you use the handbrake fast and furious style technique where you just stop with it. Otherwise, if you follow through, if you overdo it, in some shape it can be good because you can easily direct the ball over the table, but the ball tends to go over. So that way, when you make contact with it, you pull the handbrake and you stop with the follow through, kind of in your middle body, left of your arm. You can use your wrist when you make contact as well to create more spin if you want, but either way, you have to stop within, its, within your body, your left arm. Otherwise, you're gonna overdo it. Now remember, the most important part of the stir was the grip. Without the grip, you weren't able to create a spin and spin and all you need to do. But let's talk about what to, or how to do is to come back into shake hand grip, okay? So you do your serve, pull the handbrake, this is how you look. What you do is you release your fingers straight and then use them back up, close up and grab your racket. In slow motion actually feels super weird, but in, in faster motion, this is how it looks like. Now you might feel like, that you're releasing the racket completely, and then at some stage the, the, the racket's on its own, but because you're doing so quickly and you're gripping back up, it feels like, like natural. So that is your full in-depth look on how to do the pendulum surf. There is a lot of variations to it, a lot of uh, small little aspects to it, but you will get them in time, trust me. Just keep practicing. The full picture looks, looks something like this. Balls close to the tip of the racket, and I pull the handbrake. You see how how much how little I did actually swing after all. Because for me, I like to use all about the wrist. But again, this is what the arm looks like without the wrist. See, still the same thing. It's just all about the handbrake and connectivity between the ball and the racket. Okay, player, that's it for me. That's the in-depth look on how to do the pendulum serve, how to hold your racket, how to go back into shake hand, why to stand sideways, where to put the ball 
on the rubber with its connectivity and a whole follow through of the serve. Make sure you go back, take some notes. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Subscribe and I'll see you next week.